Alrighty, folks, folks, we're here to do a video for you. Sam and Todd is here for you. Anyway, uh, I was going to be like, what am I going to do a video about? You want to know? You want to guess? And then, of course, the title of the video is going to give away what I'm doing. So, you already know what I'm going to do. So, uh, as I was getting ready to do this video, though... I was getting the games together so I could do the uh, the, the obligatory hold them up and show them. And um, I found this. It was kind of buried back behind some other stuff, but it was in my in the bottom of the entertainment center out there. And um, I didn't forget I had it, but it was just when I saw it, I was like, oh, cool. Um, so I thought I'd show it just for the hell of it. Um, it's Star Wars related. Um um, 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 gotta keep the ums in there. Um, I bought this, uh, when Lucas re redid the Star Wars trilogy, or they remastered it, right before he fucked with it the first time and started changing stuff, they released it one time, um, digitally remastered, and that's when they had it at the theater, uh, before they changed it. And I believe it was like... Uh, 94, 95, around that time. And... I remember it came out, and then he started messing with it, and then he said he was never going to release the original trilogy again in the original format. And I bought a couple of DVDs, and they did put it on there as a second disc they put the original version but it didn't have commentary on it anything like the ones that he had you know made changes to and I think I'm missing the Star Wars one I think I have Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back but I don't have the Star Wars one I think it was going for like some mad money because it, it was the only way you could get it in a DVD format the original series now I don't know what uh Disney's policy is. I haven't really looked into it if they'd be uh, keen to release the original ones, unaltered ones, again in, uh, you know, Blu-ray or whatever. That'd be nice. <coughs> but at the time, I this is just when I very first kind of had heard about letterbox stuff and widescreen and, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And they had released the videos in regular um, TV format. And they, what is that, 4 by 3 or something? And then they had released the widescreen ones at whatever uh, scale resolution they are at the same time. And when they did that, they made a, a uh, box set of the three movies. And that's what I have here that's a VHS box set. I'm getting ready to show it. And he also released them on Laserdisc. And I have the Laserdiscs. I believe you you may remember, if you watched a lot of these videos, uh, I got them at the family store. And I don't remember what the deal was. I think they wanted... To, I, some makes me think they wanted, like, too much for them. And some of the other ones they had there were a lower price. And, and uh, I don't remember whether I got them to give them to me for the lower price. Because I was like, all these are different prices. You know, or, or what? It was something. Somehow I ended up getting them cheaper than they wanted them. I don't remember if it was by hook or by crook. Uh, but I think I showed them in that video. And I, some makes me think I paid like six bucks a piece for them or something. I don't remember. But I was really excited to get them at the time. And so I thought I'd show this box set. This is the box set that was released in the widescreen edition VHS. And um, there's nothing on that end, evidently. Uh, this end has uh, the Star Wars logo, and it says THX, VHS, widescreen edition. On the back, it has a George Lucas, um, you know, some words there. Uh, if you don't want to read it, maybe you could pause it, because I'm not going to hold it up forever. Uh, and, and I thought about reading it out loud anyway, so I might as well. 
The appeal of Star Wars has gone beyond anything I could have ever imagined. I am pleased that for the final video release of Star Wars in its original version, we can present it with the best sound and picture quality yet available thanks to the THX digital mastering process. Or digital mastering. I'm, I'm embellishing what George Lucas said, if you can imagine that. I'm changing what he did. Again, uh, this video... This widescreen edition also reproduces Panavision format from the original theatrical releases, running an extraordinary video experience. In the years to come, I hope you, your children, and your children's children will enjoy not only this trilogy, but the adventures to come in the continually unfolding Star Wars universe. 1995 copyright on it. So, yeah. The box is in good shape. The corners are not split out on it. I've taken pretty good care of this. As a matter of fact, I haven't really watched, I never really watched these very much because I was, I wanted to keep them in the best format and the best quality because you know how the more you watch a VHS tape, it'll get stressed and wear out or it'll have tracking issues. And I think there's even a couple of little hiccup spots on these. And I, these have only been watched maybe twice, two or three times. Uh, but anyway, the, this is them inside the box, and uh, they look nice and shiny, and that's because I never really, like I said, watched this. I bought it mainly for the uh, collectability, blah, 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 collectability of it, and uh, there's like a proof of purchase, Star Wars Trilogy Love X number 8279. I don't know what that sticker means, but it's on there, and I didn't peel it off. This is a t about the time when I started collecting things and keeping stuff in really good shape. The back of Return of the Jedi box. In the front. I still don't know if we're in how we're doing centered was. <clears throat> and like I said, these look pretty much brand new. Because, I mean, this one's not even fully... This one's actually most of the way to the end of the movie. I wonder where it stopped at needs to be rewound. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Next. Empire Strikes Back. The battle continues. Or the saga. No, it says battle, not saga. Widescreen Director's Collector's Edition. This one's the same way. I'm pretty sure if the tape is spooled on the right spool and not on the left that that means it's closer to the end. I, I don't recall at this point, but either way, none of them are fully rewound to the beginning, or at least out of these two. These boxes are nice and shiny. Really, really, really shiny looking. It's Star Wars. And I don't know exactly if they say widescreen on the sticker or not. They don't really appear to say on the actual sticker on it that it's widescreen. This one is rewound all the way. So the other two are almost to the end or stop darn close to. And then let's see what we got here. Uh, Digitally mastered direct from 70 millimeter, the tops wide vision cards. I do have some of these for Empire Strikes Back. When I run across them, I'll show some of them sometime. Uh, those widescreen cards. I know I have, I'm pretty sure most of them are for Empire Strikes Back. And then this says, this says Star Wars special offers inside, but it has never been opened. Never, ever, ever been opened. So we don't know what it actually says. We don't know what's in here. It's probably not like the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's factory or anything, but it's still sealed. And I feel like I want to open it, kind of, but I don't. Because it's been sealed for uh, 23 years or 22 years. So, um... I'm a, to resist resist that temptation, we'll just go ahead and put it back in the box like this. And 
that wasted about five to seven minutes of time that I probably could have spent doing what I came to do. But I thought that was pretty neat. And those boxes were nice looking. I didn't know they... Because that outer box was dusty as shit because it's been sitting under the uh, games and under the, the... You know, with cats and dust and everything else. I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of this with the, with the lozenge. Uh, so anyway, I was going to talk about my <coughs> 360. This is my box for my 360 that I bought. I did buy the 360 at Walmart. And the reason why I got one was because I believe at a PlayStation 2. And the 360 had been out for a little while. And I think the PlayStation 4. Uh, four, three was just getting ready to come out, or had just come out. And uh, I was talking to a guy, uh, the the guy I work with, Ben, or worked with, um, about the Force, uh, the Force Unleashed game for the PlayStation Two, and he goes, "Oh, I have that game." <coughs> and when we were talking about it back and forth, we realized that the PlayStation Two version of the game it was quite a bit different than the 360 version uh, in a couple of different ways. One being that the PS2 version was a lot easier. <laughs> but it got me to kind of be curious about the Force Unleashed for the 360. And then I was listening to this um, uh, guy, uh, this podcast, I think it's him. Cheap Ass Gamer, if you ever heard of that podcast. I don't know if he still does it or not because I haven't listened to it in years. Uh, but Cheapy D <laughs> and those guys would uh, do um, a podcast about games and stuff. And he talked about the 360, you know, you know, 360. And they were always talking about newer games and stuff. And I got to where I was kind of interested in it. And... Um, I read up on it and heard how that you know there was overheating problems and everything with it, but that they had just or were just getting ready to come out with the <coughs> latest pin set on it. And this was the last pin set I think they they did before they did the uh, slim or mini or whatever you want to call it. It's not really slim; it's just smaller. So um, I bought. This, and I bought, I know the game I bought with it, so I know the first game I bought, and it wasn't Force Unleashed. But it didn't come with any game. It says five games included. I don't know what the hell that means, because I, unless you had to download them from Xbox Live, because I didn't do that. But, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to see how this comes apart. This is tricky. There we go. So anyway, there's still a bunch of uh, styrofoam in here. The bag it came in that has a little baby choking to death on it. Um, some dividers, some green divider things. And that shit's going to slide on the floor. 360 Arcade. The Arcade didn't have a, didn't come with a, a hard drive on it. Uh, but it had a little bit of internal memory enough to do whatever you needed to be able to do. And you could save a couple of games to it. It really was just like 256 mags or something. It really wasn't, you know, anything spectacular. Um... Amplify your experience. I think that's another Xbox Live deal. This must be the actual manual and stuff. I've never even looked at it. And then we have what we have here. Xbox Live Arcade. I don't know. Maybe there's games on that. I never knew there was if there is. It looks like there's Uno and... Trial games. 
Uno, Boom Boom Rocket, Pac-Man Championship Edition, Feeding Frenzy, and Luxor 2. Well, what a bonus. That's a nice case, though. I might use that case to replace one of the ones that's uh, probably a pawn shop buy or something, but I don't know. I'd open that since I think the day I bought the thing and took it out of the box. So that was a, that was a little wild to check that out. This video is going to be super long, I can already tell. We haven't even talked about games yet. Unless you count Luxor 2 and whatever that shit the other was. Pac-Man, Uno. Get in there. Oh, seal that up. Oh, this explains the, the arcade versus the regular one versus the elite version. The uh, our, the regular one came with a 60 gig hard drive uh, and a headset and an Ethernet cord. None of that came with with this. And then it says um, the AV cable came with it, but the HDMI cable you had to buy separate and stuff like that. But not a big deal. So anyway, that's the box for the arcade. Still in pretty good shape. Put it over there. And, um, I don't know. Maybe we should check and see how long we've been talking. I can't tell. It's backwards. What is 17 minutes and 40 seconds? Okay, so games. Um, this is mainly going to be my 360 game collection. I was going to do the PlayStation 3. I still am going to do the PlayStation 3. But I thought there might be less 360 games here than the PlayStation games. Now, that being said, I don't know that there actually is looking at it. So, I'm going to get started. These are in no order whatsoever. And I believe quite a few of these were, were pawn shop buys. And I do think a couple of them were, were gifted to me by uh, Mitch Hall. From what, from I, I'm pretty sure two of them I remember him, him gifting me. So, anyway, uh, I will mention uh, games if I played them more or if I haven't played them at all and that kind of deal. So, we'll get started here. The first game is Red Faction Gorilla. Um, some makes me think I did play this for a while. I believe this is one of the games that the cheap ass gamer guy talked me into. And checking out because I think he said you could destroy a lot of the um, background and scenery and stuff. I don't remember. I don't remember if that's this game or not. I'm pretty sure it was though. So Red Faction Gorilla never played it too much, but did check it out. Same thing with this. <laughs> I I loved this show when it was on. The the last season kind of sucked the way they wrapped it up, but it's the show Lost. I had bought this game for the PC and played it through on the PC, and that's uh, Lost uh, Via Domus, and um, I think I got this cheap at a pawn shop or something, but I might even got it new cheap because I doubt it was going for that much money. But I never really played through it a second time, uh, I just played through it the once on the PC. I think this was kind of my garbage stack or part of it. <laughs> now, I don't think Red Faction Gorilla is garbage. Lost is a little iffy. It was fun because I was interested in the show, but it really doesn't have much replayability. So, same thing here. I think this is probably a pawn shop or thrift store pickup, and that would be uh, Madden NFL 08. I'm not a big um, sports game guy, but it is kind of cool to have at least one football game or a, or a tennis game, basketball, something that's sports related. Because sometimes you have buddies that are just like sports games and stuff, and they might want to come over and play or something. And, and uh, you at least you'd have a game that's you know on the latest gen or whatever, you know. And football, I, I like better. Baseball, the games are a little too long and stuff. So um, let's see how. Well, damn it. Um, 
I think somebody sent this to me, and I can't remember who did. If you still watch me, and you sent me this, I thank you immensely, but I cannot remember who sent it to me, but I'm pretty sure I didn't buy it. And that was Borderlands uh, on the 360. I believe someone sent it to me, and they said they had played through the whole thing and were done with it or whatever, and they'd send me send it to me. And I was like, all right, you know. And Borderlands is, is quality game. I do... I do kind of like it. It just seemed like the enemies respawned. I guess they do in Fallout as well. It just seemed like they respawned a lot more predictably in in Borderlands than... Uh, I, I don't know why I make comparisons of Fallout and Borderlands. They're really not the same game. So I believe somebody told me this game was pretty much garbage, but uh, I picked it up anyway. Uh, Fear 3... Um, I don't know if it's garbage, but I'm pretty sure somebody told me it wasn't that good. Now, it's got tape on it with a, with a price sticker that says $12.99, and I'm almost... This doesn't seem like something I would have paid $12.99 for in my mind. So I'm not thinking it was $12.99, even though it says that on there. Because I just don't think I would have paid that. Uh, here's another one that I think is iffy at best. I think someone told me it was kind of horrible, too. Uh, Vampire Rain. Uh, looks like I paid $3 at the pawn shop for it. This is one of the first games I got, but it's not the first game. And that is um, Dead Rising. Uh, I never played through Dead Rising. You'd think it would be something that I would be really into. But there was something about it. I think there was like you were under a timer. Or you had to be somewhere by a certain time. And I like to be able to take my time. I don't like being under the gun. So I think it kind of turned me off. Because I was like, ah, I don't like having to rush through a game just to keep up with a timer. Uh, but, I don't know. I probably never gave it a fair shot, to be honest. Um, Resident Evil 5. I think I played it for a minute. I mean, I didn't get very far. I think I, I, think I remember dying in a room, just guys pouring in every door and window in the room. And it was just like, I was like, God damn. Oh, well. <laughs> It really didn't hold my interest, uh, but, you know, I don't know what I paid for it. This game I really loved, and I have beaten this, and uh, you'll see some of these games I have for both systems, but th this one I actually beat on the 360, and that is Dante's Inferno. It plays a lot like a God of War, uh, but... It follows kind of that story of Dante going to hell and and that kind of uh, deal. But it is pretty pretty damn cool. And if you like God of War, you'd love Dante's Inferno. Uh, this is one of the ones, and I don't know where the other one is, that I believe Mitch gave me. And that was Dynasty Warriors 6. Never really played Dynasty Warriors. And um, it's got the instruction book. It looks like the cover is missing. And the game. Who knows my cat might have chewed the cover off of it for all I know. I don't know what they do when I'm not here. <laughs> this is one of the first games that kind of came out for the uh, 360 uh, because I remember it was on the regular Xbox and the PlayStation 2 as well and that is the game Gun. Uh, it's pretty fun Old West. It's kind of a Red Dead kind of style thing. Chris Christopherson does a voice in it. It's pretty cool. I uh, got this cheap. Never played it. Uh, Duke Nukem Forever. 
I, I'm pretty sure I got it at a pawn shop. Yeah, because it's got a number written in it. Um, haven't ever, I don't think, even stuck it in the machine. <laughs> uh, $1.99 it has written on the spine. Okay. Well, you gotta have gotta have a little T and A. Uh, DOA Extreme Two, Dead or Alive Volleyball, and uh, Wave Racing. I played this extensively. Not really. I never even got one um, achievement on it. I don't know. I don't know. It just seemed like I did play it quite a bit, but it seemed like I never got any achievements on it. And I was just like, I don't know what the hell I need to do to get an achievement on it. So if you looked at my, my gamer score on it, it would look like I've never played it. Uh, this is this game I, I've enjoyed and I've started it on a couple occasions, but I've never stuck with it. And that is the game Bayonetta. Um complete. Couldn't tell you where I got it. Okay. This game, this game here is why, not why I have a YouTube channel. This game here is my most viewed video on my channel. And I don't know why so many people watched it because it's a shit video. It's back before I even had a widescreen TV. Uh, but it's this uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition game. Complete. I don't know. That video has like a hundred and something thousand views or close to a hundred thousand around there. I don't know. I don't keep track of stuff. I just know and it's the most viewed video on my channel. And that might be because it's Wolverine. You know, I'm probably more likely just because it's Wolverine in the title. But, um, let's keep rolling. Ooh, this looks shitty. Let's do it next. Uh, this looks horrible. Um, the case is tore up, so I'm assuming I got this at the uh, thrift store. Uh, the game is called Beowulf the Game. I don't remember the Beowulf tale, <laughs> but I can't imagine this game is, is that awesome. Um, we ought to check out its horribly, horrible awesomeness sometime. If y'all want to see any gameplay on these, I could do some gameplay uh, on any of these um, if you want. But it would just be my ineptitude <laughs> kind of wandering through the game. <laughs> Okay, these kind of go together. These doesn't. Okay. The next one's another Ubisoft, but this one's pretty good. Uh, Call of Juarez, Bound in Blood. Another uh, Wild West game. Okay, we got quite a stack here. I need to move. Okay, uh, this one I got pretty early on, um, from what I remember. It looks like because the case is chipped that I probably got it at the pawn shop. I got quite. A, I got more games than 360 at the pawn shop than the thrift store. Uh, but Gears of War. Uh, I don't know. I've never been a big. Uh, cover base shooter guy so I found this game a little difficult but it seemed fun and I believe it was kind of an early on uh, game uh, in the 360's lifespan it's weird to say lifespan like it, the, because they don't put games out for it anymore okay the next one is Skyrim, and I did a video when I bought this, just a little video, like, why did I buy this? I didn't need this kind of thing. <laughs> and, um, it's, uh, complete. 
got some kind of prey and dishonored thing in there. Instruction book and a map. A big map. Pretty big map. Skyrim. I think the uh, I think I have, I have this game for the um, for the PS3 as well. I think, but it's the game of the year one or whatever that has all the DLC. And um, the map it came with a map as well, but the map's not nearly as big as that one is. Let's see here. Why the hell is this in here? For some reason, there's a receipt from Vintage Stock in here. Oh, th yeah, okay. Uh, I bought Skyrim for the PS3 because I was playing this one, and I forget, I think I moved my PlayStation and the game was in it, and it scratched the disc all up inside. So I took it to Vintage Stock and had them resurface it. And they do that for like two or three bucks. Three bucks, I guess it says on the ticket here. And there, it says there was a ticket for $3 in here. And I'm like, what the hell is this ticket, this price uh, receipt in here for? That's what it's from, from getting it re resurfaced. Uh, never beat Skyrim on either system. Uh, probably got farther on it on the 360. That's why when I started over again on the PS3, I wasn't as into it because I'd already done, already experienced stuff up to a certain point. Okay, the next game is Dragon Age Origins. Uh, the fighting mechanic in this was a little strange to me, and it, it was kind of hard for me to get used to. It was kind of like the um, KOTOR, the Knights of the Old Republic fight mechanic kind of how you controlled your guys or told them to fight and I just I didn't like it I like you know one for one hit the button hit the guy you know kind of deal but I played this for a while I didn't get very far in it maybe about a third of the way through and these are always this and you know there's other games I was like oh I'll get back to that one day yeah okay um, follow-up game, Dragon Age 2, I think I got it new, cheap, um, somewhere, because the case looks brand new, and there's no writing on it, or stickers, so, and Dragon Age, I did buy new at the time, same thing with Skyrim, these three I bought brand new, same thing with, I think, the, um, the Dead or Alive volleyball game. Something makes me think I bought that new on online. Bayonetta, I think who I bought brand new. But who knows? Oh god, this video is gonna be long. Welcome to Adam's World. Okay, this is an early there's the other one that Mitch gave me. Uh, Mitch gave me Naruto Rise of the Ninja. Uh, I don't really know what Naruto is, but it looked like cell shaded animation kind of video game type of stuff, so I thought it looked pretty cool. Another Ubisofter. Uh, I have this. I think I bought it new, and I think I've never played it, and that would be Batman, Lego Batman. Uh, I think I bought it new because the case just looks brand new. Um, but I, it's weird that I would buy it brand new and then never play it. So, maybe I got it cheap new. Uh, keep rolling here. Okay, there, there's some stuff. Uh, this game was really fun, and I did beat it. It's not a real long game. It only took like seven or eight hours to play through it. And uh, it's called Singularity. Um, I'm trying to remember what, there was a trick to it where you could make people old. You could like back time up or push time forward with this gadget you had in order to make it through certain areas. It was pretty cool. 
And um, I recommend this game uh, if you like uh, a little bit of puzzle solving and and um, kind of a shooter, you know, that kind of deal. But it's pretty cool, and it's not real long, and it's fairly cheap, I think. But Singularity, that was one of the cheapy, cheapy D games. He, he said he really dug that, and I bought it and checked it out, and I ended up really liking it, too. Um, I did beat this, uh, another Ubisoft, and that would be Prince of Persia. Uh, it's the only Prince of Persia game I've actually ever beaten. Hey, we have a... Uh, we have a receipt in here. I guess I bought this used for $12.99 at Vintage Stock. According to the receipt. This one I bought brand new and never really played it. I played the shit out of the, the one for the second movie. And then I just never really played this one. And that is uh, Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 2 was really awesome game. I mean, it was the game, it was the game that got my buddy to buy a PlayStation 2. One of my friends that didn't have one. He, I got him really into Diablo on the computer, and then uh, when I bought Spider-Man 2 and we were playing it on my buddy, he had one of those big widescreen TVs that was like a big projection widescreen that was like super big and took up a ton of room. Uh, we're playing the Spider-Man game on it. And he came over and checked it out a little bit. And he ended up buying a PS2 just because of Spider-Man 2 game. Um, but Spider-Man 3, when I bought it, I just felt like it was more of the same. And it really didn't feel as fun because I had played so much of the Spider-Man 2 game. This game, I bought it thinking I was going to play the shit out of it. And I played it for a few minutes and, and then I never really played it again. Terminator Salvation. I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome, and I started playing it, and it was okay, but it was more of a shooter game, and I'm just not very good at them, and I kept dying, and I was just like, fuck it, I'm done. Okay, we finally reached the game that kind of sparked some of the conversations to buy the 360 way back in the day, and that would be The Force, oh, uh, I almost said The Force Awakens, Force Unleashed, and I've never beaten the 360 one because it is harder and um, I just have never beaten it but I did beat the PlayStation 2 one and uh, I do like this game a lot I need to probably revisit it uh, uh, and then this one I have this it, it, it can, it's not complete uh, the collectors it's like a steel book collector thing but it doesn't have the directions and I think it probably has an, an overlay sleeve that's missing but it's the uh, Force Unleashed 2 and it says it on the spine and then the game it, so it's missing some pieces but I think I probably got it at the pawn shop so uh, you know you take what you can get um, this is one of the first few games I bought, and I really liked it. Ooh, I paid a lot for it. Well, no, I, that's for a few different things. Okay. Well, I still paid quite a bit for it. Um, I bought this at Vintage Stock. Evidently, I got a re receipt here. And uh, that would be Bionic Commando. I really liked this, but it sucked at the very beginning because you didn't have your arm for like the first like 15 or 20 minutes until you go chase it down. And once you got your arm, I think I got stuck on this boss. It was like a big like helicopter or something that had all these missiles that it would fire at you and shit. And you were trying to take this helicopter thing down. I think that's where I got stuck. And I just kind of gave up after that. Um, well, it looks like I paid $14.99 for the... Uh, for the Bionic Commando. Uh, a couple of uh, Pez dispenser type things for Super Mario and Link. I paid uh, $3.29 each. And then it looks like I got two Atari 2600 games for $1.99 each. I'm betting those are the sealed boxed uh, Atari games that I have. Uh, two of, anyway. Um, this is another one I probably would like to get back to. Maybe I could get by that guy now. You know, I just don't know. I haven't revisited it. 
Now, this is kind of a weird situation because I played the second one first and I beat the second one. And my buddy was like, well, why in the hell did you play through that when you could be playing Skyrim? But I played through this other game and it's a, it's a role-playing game. And it was one of those that they were talking about on the stupid cheap-ass gamer podcast. And it was uh, the other guy, I forget the guy's name, I think it was some G.I. Joe name, uh, Shipwreck. Uh, this guy named Shipwreck on there um, was talking about this game because he reviewed games and got sent games to do reviews on. And so he had to play through all these games. So he would explain some of the latest things that he had played through. He made this one sound entertaining. Maybe not good, but entertaining. I need another cough drop. I just got done with the one, too. And it's horrible. It's been horrible this week, the cough drop thing. Well, we're still rolling. How much time? I can't tell. Just have to kind of... Anyway, uh, I went ahead and I bought the game. I'm pretty sure I bought this, the, the, the second one first, brand new. But like I said, I ended up beating it. And I really liked it. I thought it was really fun and it was entertaining. But then I went ahead and bought the first one, <coughs> thinking, oh, I like the second one, I like the first one, but this first one was a lot rougher around the edges. So I never really played it. But the game is called, and I'll show the first one first, imagine that, uh, Two Worlds. And I don't know, this one just seemed a lot stiffer, a lot more clunky than the other than the second one but uh, i don't remember to be honest so i really i really shouldn't say that because i really don't remember really well about it i remember putting a lot of time into this one now two worlds two uh we got blood partial nudity sexual themes strong language and violence the first game just had blood and gore and violence I don't remember what the nudity stuff is. Oh, one of the chicks has a really low-cut dress on. I guess they could consider that partial nudity. Or a butt shot or something, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I'm pretty sure I was playing like a... You can play a mag like a magic-type character. You can play a... a uh, uh, like a, a fighter. You know, like a knight. Or you can play like a barbarian type of thing. I'm pretty sure I was using a two-handed long sword most of the time, but there's like a board where you can take it's like a cork, you know, like a like a cork board almost, but it's like a board that, where they post like different things you can do for money, like I don't know, bounties or something like bounty hunter type stuff from what I remember. That was fun. I ended up playing it until I got all the bounties and everything. The story itself was pretty good. So, um, I don't know, if you like Skyrim and stuff and you never heard of Two Worlds, you might check out, you don't really need to play the first one to play the second one, you might check out Two Worlds too, because I can't speak to the first one, but I did play all the way through the it's Two Worlds too. Okay, we've got two or three more stacks of games, I don't know how many this is, don't know if you boys and girls have been counting, but I haven't been counting. Someone's not counting. <laughs> That's from Deadpool when he's like counting the bullets. And the one guy shoots and he doesn't have any more bullets left in his gun. Someone's not counting. I can't wait for that movie to come out. Deadpool 2 coming up. Um, let's see here. This is a game I was hot to get when it came out, but I never was very good at it. Another Ubisoft game. Assassin's Creed. I've tried playing this on the 360 and then I rebought it on the PS3. I've never really given it a fair shot. That's about all I can say. I did like some of what I got what I was playing, but it didn't hold my interest enough to keep playing it. Uh, I think somebody told me I might be better off starting with a different one of the different ones. Um I don't recall at this time who said it or, or which one they told me to play. I keep checking this freaking timer. I can't tell. I'm going to restart it again. 
Okay. Now, well, let's see here. I heard these two games are related to each other, and I don't know which one came out first. And I don't know how they're really related to each other. I was trying to look for a year. I don't know. Well, I heard these were like uh, either one of them's a sequel to the other one or something, but I believe this one came out. Well, no, they're not even made by the same company, though. I don't know. I heard these were related, though. Who knows? Anyway, we've got Blades of Time. And, um... I heard it was related to this other game here that we've done a gameplay on and checked out before, and that's X-Blades. I heard, I thought I had, somebody had said, told me, or that I had heard somewhere that these were an unofficial sequel or one of those kind of things. I think maybe the Blades of Time came out after X-Blades or something. The thing is, the chick doesn't even have the same tattoos. So, unless this is a prequel to this game, or... I don't know, they, they do kind of look a little bit alike, but they don't look like the same person to me. And they're made by different gaming companies, but I don't know. For some reason, that's just stuck in my mind that somebody told me that that was the case. Oh, that looks horrible. Oh, I never really played that. Oh, never really played that. Never played that. Never really played that. Never played that. Never played that. Okay. This was a game that Ben talked up to me, and I never really played it. Um, and that's Fable 2. I did beat the first Fable game. Um, and I paid $26.99 for this. I hope it was new. Who knows? Looks like I got it at GameStop, so uh, who knows? The case looks pretty new. But, I don't know. I, I think you can play as a boy or a girl. I don't remember. And, um, I don't know. I had some, I had some, like, problem with the fact that there was, like, a, a basically a cheater's line or something. Like, if you didn't know where to go, you could just hit this button and it would tell you where to go. Which is kind of fucking stupid because, in the end, a, a game series that I really love has that exact same thing. And I... For some reason, I was like, man, that's bullshit. That's just cheating, you know, da 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 And then another series that I love has that exact same thing. I'll bring it up here in a minute. Um, Dark Sector, I think it was a couple bucks, and I think this was another one I was heard on that podcast. They said, oh, it's kind of fun, you know, and I don't really remember if it's fun or not. I don't really remember playing at all. This is another one that I, I started a couple of times and never never got very far into it. And that is, um, well, it's too human. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I think I've started this game two or three times and I just never, never really got into it. Let's see, uh... This is a Telltale game, uh, like those uh, Walking Dead Telltale games and the Batman and Game of Thrones game and stuff. Uh, this is one for the movie Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, the game, it's a t one of those Telltale ones where it kind of goes along for a little bit and then you have to make a decision, you know, kind of at a certain point or not. I, I don't really recall. It plays like a, the Telltale game, like a normal kind of Telltale game style though uh, I played it a little bit I think I mainly bought it because um, I like the other Telltale games and it was a little bit rare to find or get a hold of and I think I found it somewhere fairly inexpensive so I picked it up I did play it a little bit I didn't get very far um, here's one I've beaten the first two of these games and I beat the reboot uh, or remake 
but I didn't play through three or four. And that is Devil May Cry. Uh, this is Devil May Cry 4. I have three. I have one, two, and three on the on the PS2, but I can't do this anymore, man. The button mashing alone to uh, keep the combos going and stuff, my hand will start getting a fucking hand cramp. Uh, so I just can't, I just can't do it. It's too much. I'm like, nope, too much button pounding. I'm getting too old for this shit. As a, isn't that from a lethal weapon? Get too old for this shit. Oh, here we go. A little T, more TNA. Uh, Leisure Suit Larry, the box office bust. Uh, maybe gave it a cursory kind of play. Didn't ever get into it in any way. I think I played Summa Cum Laude on the uh, PS2 more than I played this. Uh, I, I really don't think I, I played this hardly at all. Because I, I can't even tell you what the basis of the, the game is. This looks really cool on the cover, but something makes me think it wasn't that cool. Uh, Golden Axe Beast Rider? Uh, Sega. Sega's kind of a gamble. I mean, sometimes their games are cool, and sometimes they're... Yeah. I don't remember if this is any good or not, though. More partial nudity. Well, that's because she's showing her, her uh, mid-drift. I doubt it. I don't know what they consider partially nude. All right. Here we go. This is the game I bought with the system when I bought it, the day I bought it. I don't know if this music's too freaking loud now. Um, and it's novel. I, I played it a little bit. I played a couple levels. I didn't finish it by any stretch. Uh, but I thought it was cool because it had the, the guys doing their voices for their characters and stuff from from the movie. And that would be uh, the Ghostbusters game. And this was like one of the newest games out at the moment. And uh, so I bought it, and it is fun. I just didn't stick with it because I qu quickly moved on to some other games. Even though this is the first game I bought. I think I got Dead Rising and a couple other ones within, like, a week, you know, so. Uh, this is one that I was really looking forward to when it came out, and it was fun. Uh, I never played the DLC content because I just never uh, went on Xbox Live ever in my life. <laughs> but uh, that's Alan Wake, and I bought this new. It was fun, like I said. I thought the end boss, from what I remember, or the end, whatever you had to do at the end was fairly easy. I didn't think it was hard enough or enough of a... It didn't feel like the reward or the end of the game, I don't know, paid off, I guess is the best way to say it. It looks like the journey was better than the... Uh, Oh, you know, the overall experience was better than the end, you know, that kind of deal. This looks like more randomness, and then it looks like I've got my stack of games that I really, really enjoy. Since we already showed the other one, I'll show this. Uh, this is the Devil May Cry uh, remake, and I did beat this uh, on the 360. I played the hell out of this. I This was really fun. It wasn't as much of a button mash as, as those other Devil May Cry games. But, uh, let's see here. Okay, we've got Hellboy, The Science of Evil. I did a gameplay on this. I think it's gotten some views. But I don't recall how good the game is. I played a little bit of it. It, it seemed like it was fun. It was fun to just uh, kind of goof around with. This is one of those games that was a little bit expensive, and I picked it up mainly because it looks weird. <laughs> and uh, I've never played it. I, I mainly just bought it because 
Yeah. You tell me something's a cult classic or something, that immediately, like, it presses my sucker button. Uh, but I don't know if this is a cult classic, but it's called Alice Madness Returns. And uh, the game and some online code. I don't know if they had an. If it had an instruction booklet that comes with it, it's not in here. <laughs> but I don't know if this game had an actual physical instruction book. You never can tell toward the later laterness of the lifespan. It probably had an instruction book. It's probably just missing. Uh, this game here I have for both systems. <laughs> Uh, it's wet. Uh, I played a little bit of it. It's fun. Uh, didn't play it very far. Too many games, not enough time. Uh, er, er, er. This one, though, I did play all the way through, and I was surprised, surprised by the ending on it. It actually caught me off guard. And uh, that would be this game here. Um, Batman Arkham City and uh, this is the sequel to Arkham Asylum I have Arkham Asylum on the PS3 some makes me think I have Arkham As I thought I had Arkham Asylum on the, on the uh, Xbox as well but I don't think I do no I think I bought Arkham Asylum no I don't know. I guess I could check my gamer score on my P on my Xbox and see. Um, but it's got both discs, and the, it's the Game of the Year edition. I don't remember. I, th I think this one had like one of them has like Catwoman levels or something you can play. Oh, the Catwoman pack. Yeah, that's this. Um, Got a nice Harley Quinn shot on the back. Uh, some game uh, footage shots. And, uh, yeah, like I said, the ending caught me off guard on this. And uh, I was a little bit kind of, like, taken back by it. Uh, I just was like, I I don't know. You you know what I'm talking about if, you, if you've watched it or if you played through it. Uh, I don't know that I should give it away, so I'm not going to, but... Uh, this is a game, I think it was a little bit rare, and I remember hearing I remember hearing about it or watching some gameplay on it or something. When I had picked it up, so it makes me think it was kind of difficult to know how to control your characters, but I don't know. Um, so it makes me think this was a little bit rarer, though, or harder to get a hold of, and I found a copy at the pawn shop, I believe. It was a pawn, let me see. What? Yeah, it's got a number written in black in here, so that's usually a pawn shop, but Record of Agarest War is the name of the game. And uh, it's a... Uh, there's a soundtrack disc and a regular disc so there's a soundtrack in here and then the instruction book and I don't remember it's got definitely a Japanese style animation look to the artwork on the on the case which is cool it looks interesting I just don't re I don't know maybe I just want to dedicate that kind of time to that or something this game I bought, have never played it because I haven't finished the first one yet, and I said I wasn't going to start this one or stick it in until I beat the first one, and I haven't beat it. But I don't own the first one on the 360. I only own it on the PS3, but they didn't release this game on the PS3. They released it on the PS4, so I bought the 360 version. And that's Rise of the Tomb Raider. And like I said, I have the Tomb Raider on the other one. And I got most of the way through it. I just didn't finish it. Story of my life. Let me see here. Ninja Gaiden 2. I love the Ninja Gaiden. I, I, even on the Xbox One, I love Ninja Gaiden. But I never really played this one. 
that much. And it felt like a little more of the same uh, with it. Okay, folks, we had a complete uh, battery battery crisis. It died, and I had to charge the camera. So it's been about a half hour, and it's not even fully charged. So I'm going to try to roll pretty quick because I don't know how much time we got here. So um, I forget what I was... I know I started talking about this game, so I probably will trim what I said. So you're hearing this post facto. So why am I telling you? Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, the game is, this is a series that I never really got into, but maybe it's because I, it's more fun to play multiplayer, and I never really played it with anybody, uh, but that is, um, Left 4 Dead, and it seemed like I, I checked some of the video, it seemed like I was holding it kind of low, so I don't know if that's any better, um, it was fun enough, but I, it just seemed like it would be more fun with playing with your buddy on, you know, sitting next to you or something, and uh, I just have never really played it like that, so I just didn't get into it. Um, this I think I bought new, and the main reason why I bought it is because it's got some games on it that are pretty pricey for the Genesis, and that is Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. I know, um, I think it's something you have to unlock by playing some other games. I believe there's games on here that are, like, locked until you unlock them. Um, and the main reason why I bought this is because Shining Force 2 is on this. But I believe you have to unlock it by playing through a different game and getting a score on it. And it's a game I'm not very good at, so I don't think I've ever unlocked uh, Shining Force 2. But it's the whole reason why I pretty much bought this, because the Shining Force 2 um, complete copy uh, for the Genesis was is like, I believe they're like 80 bucks or, or so. I haven't checked it in a while. Um, okay, the next, uh, next game I have here, this was kind of a... Uh, I had to be convinced to try this, but once I did, I thought it was pretty cool. Um... That is, uh, well, actually, this is a group of three games, but uh, it's called uh, the um, Xbox 360, the Orange Box. And it has uh, Half-Life 2, Episode 2, Team Fortress 2, and Portal. And Portal's the game I'm talking about where uh, Ben kind of talked me into trying it. And... Uh, so that's why I ended up buying this was for um, for Portal, and I have never played Half Life Two. Um, I've heard it was pretty good, uh, but I've never played it. I've never even tried to play it on here. I think I watched, I started it up and watched like an intro or watched the beginning part of whatever it does, but that's about it. Um, I want to get the orange box on the PS3, and I don't think I have because it was kind of pricey. And then this is the uh, the follow-up game, uh, Portal 2, which I've beaten this, and I have beaten Portal. Uh, it took me a while to beat Portal. I kind of stopped halfway through it because I got stuck, and then I went back to it and started from the beginning again and basically played all the way through it the second time I did. Uh, but... I'm pretty sure I got this used because it was still kind of worth some dough when I bought it. Um, so I think I got it at a pawn shop or something. Okay, let's keep going. We're going to do trilogies and such now, I think. We'll do games and sequels and then trilogies real quick. Um... Here's the game I, I've talked about the last couple of times. Uh, XCOM, Enemy Unknown. And uh, I never beat Enemy Unknown or its sister game, the XCOM Enemy Within. But actually, if I had to recommend one to somebody, play Enemy Within because... Enemy Unknown is basically, it's basically the same game with just act more stuff. 
So, I mean, this is like playing a game with less of the extras than this. It's almost like DLC. It's not even like really a whole new kind of experience. Except you can do uh, your uh, mech warriors and you can do your uh, cybernetic um, enhancements or genetic enhancements and stuff to your characters and things like that. Um, and there's a couple of different um, story points that are different, but I think they're better overall. So I think you're just better off if you have never played it getting uh, Enemy Within. Um, let's see. This one's in a black case. I'm pretty sure that's because I got it at a at a place and the case was busted and I ended up just getting a black case because they were cheap or getting a movie that has a was a dual case, but that is uh, the Game of the Year edition of Fallout 3. And like I said, it's just in a normal case. It's probably a movie case. I probably picked up a movie cheap that had a case that wasn't all busted up and put it in here. So, uh, didn't want to pay for a green uh, new case that was a dual cart case, I guess. And then I have beaten Fallout 3, and I, I, I really... I beat it on the PC the first time I played it. I never beat it on the 360. And then I went back when I got the PS3 and played through Fallout 3 and played all the DLC content on the PS3. So, and then this was one of the ones I was talking about where I noticed a difference. It played really kind of jerky for me on the uh, Xbox, but that's uh, Fallout New Vegas. It was just really buggy. Um, but, um, I didn't, I bought the Game of the Year edition on the, uh, PlayStation. Maybe it was just this version. Maybe the Game of the Year edition was better overall once they fixed it on the, uh, 360 as well. But it's got a cover sleeve, which is not, which makes me think I bought that new. Okay, well, we're going to do these quickly enough. Um, Trilogies. Trilogy, Trilogy, Trilogy. This is, this game series is really great. I always look forward to a, a new installment. And that is the Bioshock series. Um, the Playing through Bioshock 1 was an experience because they did kind of get me. You know, halfway through it, I was like, oh, okay, uh, yeah, all right. You kind of catch, when you finally get to a point where he kind of gets the right info, you, you just got to play it. And there's a point where your mind's like, whoa, they've been doing that the whole time, you know? And it's just like, you know, it was a twist for sure. But I beaten Bioshock on the 360. I did beat it. I bought it. This looks used because the case looks busted. Um, but... But I did play through it, this one on the 360 and beat it, as well as as well as all these really. Bioshock 2, I also played through and beat it. This is doesn't even have the instruction book, so it obviously came from a from a, well, it could have came from vintage stock. Who knows? Sometimes they still don't have instructions on them either. This one I bought brand new because I originally bought the the original one, uh, not the complete edition and beat it and then i loaned it to ben uh the guy i worked with to play and he uh had it for a while and then they moved and he lost it track of it and eventually i just said dude you can just keep it because i went out and bought the complete edition that had the uh the uh other stuff that you could add ons and stuff so uh but i have beaten bioshock infinite as well and i think it's just as good as the other two i mean some people didn't think it was as good but i thought it was good so the bioshock trilogy the uh here's another this one's one of my favorites and i played through two of these all the way through on the 360 and that is the dead space trilogy isaac clark uh, dead space one i beat on the 360, and I remember playing it and being like, man, this is really freaking awesome. Because it felt like kind of like an alien movie or something, but 
it's just, it was pretty intense. It, yeah, or Event Horizon, that movie Event Horizon. Kind of like that. And, uh, so, yeah, Isaac Clark, Dead Space 1. <clears throat> then I went out and bought Dead Space 2. <clears throat> at GameStop for $18. But it's a pretty nice copy. The case looks nice and stuff. <clears throat> and then this one I bought brand new when it came out. But I never beat it on this system. And that's Dead Space 3. Um, I uh, bought it. And uh, I, I started playing through it. And I got stuck at a certain point And I kind of gave up on it. Because I, like I said, I have so many games. So I moved on. And then... What happened was I ended up buying, I think Dead Space Two, for the uh, for the for the PS3, because it had Dead Space Extraction on it as well, and I wanted Dead Space Extraction because I hadn't played it, and I ended up buying all of the Dead Space games on the PS3, and I ended up playing through all of them again on the PS3, and I actually beat Dead Space Three. On the PS3, but I never actually beat it on the on the uh, 360. But Dead Space is a quality series. So is Bioshock. You can't go wrong with these, in my opinion. I don't know. Uh, one of them's a space, you know, sci-fi. Like I said, Event Horizon. Uh, Bioshock. You start off in an underwater city, um, and it kind of goes from there. The people have kind of all gone insane because they've been injecting themselves with um, genetic modifications of some kind. I forget exactly what it's called offhand, because I haven't played it in a while. And then we have one more trilogy here, and then a couple of kind of collector set things. Uh, the last trilogy is the Mass Effect trilogy. And I have never beaten any of the Mass Effect games. I'm about halfway through the first one. And that's fairly recent. I started playing it again and got about halfway through it. Um, to the point where I think you have to make a decision between two of the characters. Which one lives and which one dies. And I think I played through that part of it and then kind of I've stopped for some reason or another. But Mass Effect... This one was definitely uh, used because I remember it had a gray uh, game case for some reason. And I found a good green game case and put it in a green game case. It might have had an, a gray one originally. I don't know. I don't think it did. So, um, you know, either way, I don't care. I like it in the green one. So, Mass Effect 2, I'm pretty sure I bought brand new at like a Walmart or something because it was cheap. Um... It looks pretty crispy. Uh, never been played because I wasn't going to play it until I played through the first one. So I've never even stuck Mass Effect 2 in. And then what happened was I bought the Mass Effect trilogy on the PS3. And I thought it just it felt kind of jerky. Like it didn't want to... I don't know. Some of the cinemas or some of the other stuff just felt like it wasn't running. And I was like... Well, how does it run on the 360? Because it was originally a 4 only, uh, or a only for the 360 when it came out. And um, so I stuck in Mass Effect on the 360 and started playing it, and I felt like it ran a lot smoother and felt like it just controlled better. And what had happened is I had already bought the trilogy, and I wasn't going to take it back because I think I got it at one of uh, the... Uh, a vintage stock uh, buy to get one sales or something and I was just like ah forget it I'll just keep it and uh, but I ended up going out and buying uh, Mass Effect 3 on the uh, on the 360 so I bought this uh, Mass Effect 3 I don't know if this is a special edition or what N7 collector's edition uh, I know I got this used I didn't buy it new um but it's got some kind of, uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, looks like a 
comic book of some kind uh, and an art book. Yeah, it's a comic. Comic. And an art book. It's got a uh, postcard of some kind. Uh, N7 uh, patch that's actually Velcro on the back. Um, that's all the goodies that are in this little pouch thing. And then I'm trying to hurry up because I don't know how much time or battery power I have. I'm sorry if I'm rushing now, but I'm tr really trying to not have to wait again to charge the camera. And then that came with a steelbook thing. This steelbook thing's a little bit dented, but that makes me know that I, I bought it used. <laughs> and that is, uh, here's the steelbook. And this part right here, it's got a little bit of a dent here. But I played a female character. Um... I think I had, I've done a video on that. Do you prefer the ladies or the guys? And I think we talked about it. And about two thirds of the time, maybe even three quarters of the time, I usually take ladies if there's a choice. And I don't really know why. Maybe I always wished I was a woman. I don't know. Um, and last things last, we have two kind of collector's edition things here. Uh, this is the 360. I think I bought this because I had played through a different game, and I looked up this, the creator of that game and saw what other games he had done, and this was one of them. So I went ahead and bought this. Or I might have got this first. I don't remember. This just looked pretty crazy, I remember, and I decided to go ahead and buy it. But uh, it's the game uh, Killer is Dead, and this is, looks like some kind of collector's edition or something, but... It's um, got this slide-out box, and then it's split a little bit along this edge, and it's got a sleeve over the game, and then the game itself, you're like an assassin of some kind, it kind of reminds me of like Johnny Mnemonic, or, or uh, you know, but I it looks like he's got a robotic arm, too, so I don't know exactly. The music of Killer is Dead, so this must be the soundtrack. It's kind of got that John Wick look about him, but he's got a samurai sword. And that was the front of that. I don't know if I showed that. And then it's got a, it's got its own art book. Man, this is stiff. I don't know if this has ever even really been looked in. Look, it, do, it doesn't really want to open any wider than that. I mean, because it's like, it's never the spine's never really been opened. Let's see. Little uh, T for your A. Oh, here we go. That is stiff, though. I don't really want to pry it all the way open <laughs> uh, because it's so fresh feeling. It's like this was never really looked through. The spine is like brand new on it. But I played this a little bit. I think I got stuck at one point, and so I kind of moved on. I do that a lot. But Killer is Dead. I think the same guy, uh, uh, some of his other games include the game Lollipop Chainsaw, which I really loved. And um, that's what makes me think, did I buy this and then look up the games that he had done and found out that he did Lollipop Chainsaw and went in and bought it and that I really liked it? Or whether it was the other way around. I don't remember. Um, and then the final thing, I bought this used, not used, new on Amazon. Um, and I think they were clearancing them out because they were in like new condition. This box is a little dinged up. But, uh, I never really played this game, but I bought it mainly because it was cheap, and that is uh, this limited edition Death Smiles for the 360, and it came with a, a um, 
faceplate for your system and the game. And uh, there's the game. I usually keep this up above in the in the shelf there, and I usually just leave the game in it. Death smiles. It looks like little girls in a school or something. I don't know. They look pretty young, <laughs> but I'm getting older, you know. I get older, but they stay the same age. What is that from? Is that from Days and Confused? I forget. I know it's Matthew McConaughey. And here's the face plate. I never put this face plate on my on my system. I've got a couple different ones. I've got the original white one that came on it, and then I have a um, a uh, wood grain looking one from for old school style, and then I have one that's like this like splashy kind of water splash kind of thing across, and that's the one I have on it right now. But. Uh, that wraps it up. That's all the games I have for the 360. Um, I don't know if there's any exclusives that I don't have that I would want at this point. Because if they're not exclusive, I would probably just go ahead and get them for the PS3. So I hope the battery didn't give out. It looks like it's still running. So anyway, that's pretty much it. That's what I have. I don't have... Um, I don't have a very big selection. I don't... Well, it's pretty big. <laughs> And um, I think there's some good titles in there. The ones at the end were the ones I really actually played through and really loved. I also loved the Devil May Cry remake, um, Dante's Inferno, and uh, um, I'm trying to think, the Portal games, both of them. And, um, you know, some games I didn't give a fair shot to, and some games are just TNA or... Uh, you know, whatever. They were cheap, you know, pawn shop pickups or fo that football game or something, you know. I mean, they're just um, shelf filler, I guess. But um, anyway, I'm trying to put this back in the package just like it was. Why are you trying so hard, dude? Oh, well. There we go. That's good enough. All right. So anyway, I'm going to let you fine folks leave and be done with this shit. And we'll try to get another video out in the next week. I don't know what it'll be about. I have some figurines and pops and shit to show, but I didn't really want to do that back to back with the other video. I thought I'd talk about games for a Switch. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I kind of enjoyed going through it. A lot of, I've never played this. I've never given it a fair shot. Oh. I don't even know if I've ever stuck this in my system. And then there's about 10 or 12 games, and I'm like, oh, I fucking love this game. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't think I'm that. I just, I just want to experience new things. So it's like when I get something, I experience it, and if it doesn't really hook me in, uh, I'm cool with it. I'm, I don't want to give it up or anything, but I just put it to the side. Like, oh, I'll come back to it sometime, and I just never make it back. And so... I guess I'm going to revamp, kind of maybe pull out some of the games I said I was going to revisit and put them out in the living room and put some of these other ones that I actually have finished that were out there up. So maybe it'll motivate me to play some of those other games like Bayonetta and, um, you know, Red Faction Guerrilla or um, Gears of War, you know, some of those other games that I just didn't really... Um, give enough time to wear that Bionic Commando, maybe finish it finally. I doubt. I don't think it's that hard. I just think I was stuck. Maybe finish the Mass Effect. <laughs> you know, who knows? So, anyway, that's it. Anyway, anyway, that's going to be my new thing. Um, anyway, um, anyway, Bueller, Bueller. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you next vid.